Thank you so much for clicking on this video and being a part of our amazing community. If you enjoy what you see, hit that subscribe button and join us on this exciting journey. Your support means the world to me. Sit back, relax, and let's enjoy the video. Hey there Reddit, it's William here. I'm 41 and I'm just an ordinary guy, you know? Like you, I've scrolled through numerous heartbreaking confessions about infidelity with a sense of disbelief, maybe even a bit of superiority. I always told myself that could never happen to me, not with Madison. But today, the joke's on me. My heart feels like it's been ripped out of my chest, stomped on, and handed back to me still beating. My wife, she cheated on me with my old army buddy, Matthew. In the hope of finding some catharsis, I'm going to share my story with you. I'll change the names, for obvious reasons. Matthew and I go way back. We were comrades, brothers in arms, you could say. We met in the army and served together about 20 years ago. There's a bond there, a bond that only soldiers understand. It's the kind of friendship that's forged in the crucible of shared danger, of having each other's back no matter what. Those were the glory days when we were young, fearless, and inseparable. After the service, we held onto that bond for a while, trying to adjust to a world that wasn't at war, a world that didn't make sense to us anymore. But life, as it often does, had other plans. I took the plunge and started my own business selling plumbing supplies in our hometown, hoping to create a quieter, safer life for myself. Matthew, on the other hand, climbed the corporate ladder, becoming a big shot director of logistics. His new job required him to move away from our sleepy little town, leaving me behind. That was when the late night beer sessions stopped. I missed him, sure, but I understood. Life was taking us down different roads. One day, out of the blue, I got a call from Matthew. He was all business, talking about some partner living near me who he needed to meet for the good of his company. Between the lines of professional chatter, there was a request, or maybe an appeal. He asked if he could stay at my place for a while. I was excited at the prospect. Matthew, my old buddy, staying at my place? I thought it'd be like the old times, a chance to relive our shared history. I agreed instantly, looking forward to reminiscing about our past adventures and catching up on lost time. But I wasn't the only one involved in this decision. Madison We were sitting on our worn out couch when I told Madison about Matthew's visit. She was tired, as always, but she still listened to me with patience, her hands wrapped around a warm cup of tea. So, how long is he planning to stay with us, Will? she asked. I noticed a hint of worry in her voice. I paused, realizing that I hadn't thought this through completely. He didn't specify, I replied honestly. It could be a while. His work thing seems pretty important. She was quiet, taking it all in. Then, she finally voiced her concerns, her words like a mirror reflecting our chaotic life. More cooking, more cleaning, the girls. She sighed, her words hanging heavy in the air. It was a quiet plea for understanding, for empathy. I felt a pang of guilt, but I still tried to convince her. I know, Maddie. It's a lot. But it might be nice to have a change, right? Matthew is a good guy, an old friend. It could be fun. She looked at me, her eyes searching mine, trying to find some assurance. I wish I could have given her that. Instead, I gave her my hope, my naivety. We can handle it, right? We always do. After what felt like an eternity, she finally nodded. Okay, we'll. If you think it's a good idea, we'll do it. I felt a rush of relief then. Madison was always there, always trusting me, always having my back. But I was so wrong. Matthew showed up at our doorstep on a Friday. There he was, a tall figure with a warm smile on his face, just as I remembered. We shared a hearty dinner and a few bottles of cold beer. It was comfortable, even nostalgic. But Madison, she kept her distance. She was busy with the kids, making sure they were fed, 
bathed, and tucked into bed. The next day rolled out in much the same fashion. Madison busied herself with our girls while Matthew and I spent our time talking about old times, catching up on everything we'd missed in each other's lives. I saw less of Madison that day than I normally did, but I assumed it was just her giving us space, giving us time to reconnect. One evening, we were sitting on the porch, a couple of beers between us, when Madison passed by, intending to clear up the dinner dishes. Matthew stopped her, Maddie, leave this. Let me clean up later. Come join us. She looked taken aback, but after a glance in my direction and a reassuring nod from me, she complied. As she settled down, there was an unfamiliar silence, soon broken by Matthew as he revealed his personal turmoil. He was getting a divorce, a fact that clearly upset Madison. Oh, Matthew, I'm sorry to hear that, she said. Her voice was full of concern, her usual cheerful demeanor replaced by sympathy. It warmed my heart to see her kindness extended to my friend. Things happen, Maddie, Matthew replied, forcing a smile. But thank you. During those moments, I felt a strange sense of relief seeing Madison and Matthew interact. My wife and my old friend, getting along. It seemed like a positive step, a sign that my decision to bring Matthew into our home was right. How wrong I was. It's a bitter pill to swallow, knowing that what I once saw as a budding friendship was the start of my world falling apart. The days passed in a blur, Matthew off and away, busy with his business meetings. Meanwhile, I balanced my work with trying to spend time with him and my family. Madison and I were in our own little routine, caught between our daily responsibilities and the unexpected guest. Then, just as we were adjusting to the new normal, disaster struck. On Friday, late in the evening, I got a call that left me in a state of panic. My warehouse, the heart and soul of my business, had been flooded. I rushed to the scene. The sight of my livelihood, my years of hard work submerged in water, was something I won't forget. That night, my team and I tried to salvage what we could, racing against time, against the rising water. The sound of the dripping water, the sight of ruined goods, the calls with the police and insurance companies, the negotiations with the neighbors, it was a whirlwind, one crisis after another. As dawn broke, I found myself driving back home. I was soaked to the bone, weary, and broken. I hadn't slept a wink, my mind filled with worries about the financial blow and the rebuilding that lay ahead. As I walked into our home, the silence of the early morning engulfed me. The girls were asleep, their peaceful faces a sharp contrast to the chaos outside. I was dead tired as I headed up to our bedroom. My body was screaming for sleep, my eyes gritty with exhaustion. I just wanted to crash in bed, to feel Madison's warmth next to me. A piece of my normal world amidst the disaster that was unfolding. But as I neared our bedroom, I heard this weird sound. Snoring. But Madison, she doesn't snore. Puzzled and more than a bit annoyed, I opened the door. And man, what I saw, it's etched in my mind. Right there, in our own bed, Madison and Matthew were all tangled up, asleep. It was like someone punched me in the stomach. I felt this wave of rage, washing away my exhaustion. I roared, what the hell is happening? Matthew, the jerk, bolted awake. He had this guilty look on his face, stuttering, Will, I, it's not what you think. But I wasn't born yesterday. It was exactly what I thought. Madison, she was crying, trying to apologize, Will, I. I'm so sorry. Sorry? She was sorry? The woman I'd given my heart to, who I trusted more than anyone, had stabbed me in the back. It was like a slap in the face. It hurt worse than the warehouse disaster, worse than anything I'd ever felt. My heart was shattering into a million pieces. She had turned our home, my sanctuary, into a scene of betrayal. I felt like my world was crashing down around me, leaving me in a pile of broken pieces. My heart was pounding in my chest. I felt like a volcano ready to explode. I can't believe you, Matthew. 
I trusted you, man. I bellowed at him. The room felt too small, too suffocating, every breath was a struggle. Then, I turned to Madison, my wife, my partner, the mother of my children. And you. Madison, I growled, after everything we've built together, is this what it comes down to? Some cheap fling with my supposed best friend? I could hardly look at her. The betrayal was too deep, too raw. But, Will. Madison started, but I cut her off. No, I don't want to hear your excuses. I snapped, both of you, get out. Get out of my house. Seeing them scramble out of our bed, gathering their scattered clothes in panicked haste, felt surreal. But there was a savage satisfaction in watching them scurry out of the house, faces flushed with shame. There I stood, alone in the cold morning light, watching the two people I trusted most walk away. I felt this confusing mess of emotions, grief, rage, and this heavy sense of betrayal. It felt like I had swallowed a bitter pill, and it was stuck in my throat. Looking back now, I hope that by sharing my story, I can open some eyes to the harsh reality of infidelity. It's a sneaky monster that can creep in and ruin even the strongest relationships. Trust, once shattered, is a hard thing to put back together. So, keep your eyes wide open, never let your guard down, and don't take anything for granted. Life has a way of surprising you when you least expect it. Update Hey everyone, thought I'd pop in with an update as it's been three months since I shared my story and some of you have been asking about how things are going. The good news first. I was able to recover the losses from the warehouse flooding thanks to my insurance. What a relief that was, I'll tell you. It felt like I was finally catching a break after a really tough time. My girls are staying with me, which is just the silver lining I needed. They've been my rock throughout this whole mess. They visit their mother on the weekends. I can see it's hard on them, but they've been brave, braver than I thought possible for their age. I'm trying to keep things as normal as I can for them, but I know this situation isn't ideal. As for the divorce, I've gathered all the proof I needed and filed the papers. It's a bitter pill to swallow, ending a relationship that was once my everything, but there's no turning back from what Madison did. She's been to the house three times since, sobbing about how it was a drunken mistake and that she regrets it. But I haven't let her cross the threshold. Once the trust is broken, it's next to impossible to rebuild, isn't it? I mean, how am I supposed to look at her the same way again? As for Matthew, he didn't pursue a relationship with Madison, not that I care what he does anymore. He's still dealing with his own divorce and says he doesn't want a relationship right now. Good riddance, I say. To be honest, I don't care about what happens to either of them anymore. All that matters to me now are my daughters and making sure we get through this as unscathed as possible. So, there it is. It's been a roller coaster of a few months, but right now, things are looking up. It's strange how life works out sometimes. It throws you curveballs when you least expect it, but it also gives you the strength to deal with them. Thanks for all your support, guys. It means a lot. Okay, I have no words. And I don't even know how it happened, like really. She was a good wife, but how this could happen? Like seriously, so we can't trust even good wives? Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it valuable, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and become a part of our growing community. Now. I invite you to share your thoughts, opinions, and ideas in the comments below. I genuinely value your feedback and look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. Let's connect, learn, and grow together.